So let's take a moment and talk about the Bios of Arla. So the Bios of Arla was discovered by a couple of French guys, John Baptiste Bio and Félix Savard. Um, my French pronunciation is horrible, so I am apologizing. All right, and they discovered empirically that the infinitesimal bit of magnetic field caused by a wire is equal to mu naught. This is the permeability permeability of free space. It's equal to four pi pi times ten to the minus Tesla meter per amp. It's a funny unit, but it's a constant. All this says is how well a magnetic field goes through free space. So you had the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, when you talked about electric fields. When you talk about magnetic fields, we have permeability of magnetic field. And then this is over 4 pi times a steady current. We're only going to deal with steady currents in this class. I, dl, little chunk of the wire carrying this, across r hat over r squared. If you want to find the total magnetic field, then you integrate. And since current's constant, it goes out. But let's, uh, let's take a look at this little wire example right here. So this would be our r, and r hat would point from the wire to the point we're interested in. Now keep in mind that whenever you see r hat, this little arrow, this is a unit vector. It just tells direction. So we have a little chunk of dl right here. So this is dl pointing up, and we have r hat. So if we're looking at this, which way is the magnetic field going to go here? So try your right hand rule. Do, 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 do. Did you do it? Very important that you do, because this video, it's going to get really confusing, and you need all the practice with the right hand rule you can get, and we're going to introduce another right hand rule. That's right, there's a second right hand rule, but you don't need two right hands to do it. Just one. So if you did that, you would find that, oh, DL fingers point this way in the direction of DL, curl your fingers so that they bend towards r hat, your thumb points into the board, and you get that your magnetic field at that point points into the board. All right. At that point. Oh, if you're on this side of the wire over here, now your magnetic field points out of the wire. And if you watched that video, the one right before this, where you had a magnetometer going around a current carrying wire, you would know that it circles around the wire. Which leads us to that second right-hand rule I was talking about, where if you point your thumb, thumb with I, or with current in this case, your hand curls with B, with the magnetic field. And you'll know that the magnetic field caused by a straight wire goes in a round circle. So this is a lot to take in, so we're going to do this through a series of examples. So for starters, let's say we have an infinitely long wire, and we want to find the magnetic field at this point. Well, we know that we're going to integrate along this wire, and let's take a look at our setup real quick. Current's going up direction. This is going to go from 0 to 0 infinity, or positive infinity. We're going to make this little angle right here, and we are going to look at the contribution from this little piece of length. You also remember that dl cross r Anytime you have this dot product, this magnitude would be magnitude of dl. In this case, this would be dx. And r hat, the magnitude of this is 1, so it would be 1 times dx, however big that is, times sine of theta. We'll worry about the magnitude right now. So we take a look at this. We write out mu naught i over 4 pi, pulling out all our constants, sine theta dx. Oh, sine theta, we're just going to replace with this r right here over this little x squared plus r squared square root of that to get our sine of this angle because as you get closer you're going to get right up there and then we're actually going to multiply this by 2 and the reason we're going to multiply it by 2 is we're going to split this into two easy integrals for negative infinity and the positive infinity and this also has the perk that that's going to cancel out and there we go we also replace this little r right here this distance with square root of x squared plus r squared so now our equation is going to look something like, so we pull out our constants, we integrate from 0 to infinity, rx, or r, dx, sorry, over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. So we integrate this through the magic of calculus, and you get mu naught i x over x squared plus r squared to the 1 half, evaluating 0 to infinity. Oh look, 
that x on the bottom, x squared, value at infinity gives you a really tiny number, and you wind up with the B field for an infinitely long straight wire. The magnitude of this is just equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. Ta-da! Then we need to worry about the direction, which we use our right hand rule. Remember, the thumb points in the direction of the current, your hand's going to curl around, and you get into the board, at this case. Alright, so what happens when we have more than one wire? Alright, so let's see. We have two wires. Oh, let's go back to our good friend superposition, which just means that to find the total magnetic field, we're going to add a magnetic field from wire 1, magnetic field from wire 2. Wait a minute, these are vectors. We have to worry about direction and components. Hmm. So let's look at wire 1. Use your right hand rule, thumb in the direction of current. Curl your hands and you'll find at point P which way is the magnetic field point. Okay, points to the right, so that's B from wire 1. Now this one's a little trickier. Okay, coming out. Going in for wire 2. Oh, it's a 45 degree angle, but it's off this way, so that's B2. So this would be 45 degrees. Uh, the 45 degrees I just get from these angles and know that it's perpendicular to this vector, which is a 45 degree angle, so 45 this way, 90 degrees. Good. All right, so let's only look at the x component. I1 only has an x component, so this is going to be equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi r plus Hmm, sine or cosine? Well, it doesn't matter because it's 45 degrees, but we want the x component. So that's going to be this side right here. That's going to be a minus going in the negative x direction minus mu naught i over 2 pi r. And we want the adjacent side. That is cosine 45 degrees. Uh, sorry, that ran off the page. That was a 45 degree. Yeah, it still ran off the page. You understand. All right. So then you would find that in the x component. You would do the same thing for the y component. Oh, no. Wire 1 has no y component. This would just be identical except the sign. So b y equals 0 plus, because now it's going to the positive, mu naught i over 2 pi pi. Oh, wait. This is r. So that's actually square root 2r squared square root of 2r sine 45. Keep in mind, just like when you did the electric field, this is the distance that matters. Distance between the point and where you happen to be. Alright. Let's look for some more. Let's see, we have a loop. Oh, this is a little bit different because now it's curving. Hmm. All right, so if we're looking at this, mu naught i, let's replace dl with r d theta because that's going to be going around. And let's make theta go from, well, we're going around full circle. That's 0 to 2 pi over r squared because in this case, r is going to be constant. The cancel out, and you get the magnetic field. Oops, forgot the I there. Magnetic field due to a current loop in the wire mu naught I over, you no, know, integrate 0 to 2 pi, that gives you 2 R. Ta da! Now we need to find the direction. So you can do this one of two ways thumb in the direction of the current. You can see that when your hand's going into the center loop, the magnetic field's coming out. The other way to do this, curl your hand with current. We'll call this the third right hand rule. Pretty much, if ever you need a direction in physics and you've got a cross product, just stare at your right hand for a while and the answer will come to you. Curl your fingers with I. If you curl your hand so that your fingers go with I, you'll see that your thumb's sticking up. And that means it is coming out of the board. So if you curl your fingers, point your thumb in the direction of I, your fingers are curled towards B. If you curl your fingers with I, then your thumb points towards B if you have a loop. Or another way to think about it, if you point your fingers in the direction of B, 
your fingers will curl with the current that makes that loop, or makes that magnetic field. Let's keep the fun rolling. All right, so let's look at these two magnetic wires and their interaction. Now, first off, you've got a current carrying in wire one. What's that make? Oh, a magnetic field that circles around it. So we'll call this B1. Oh, wait. Now, wire two interacts with B1. See? So now you have a current in a magnetic field caused by one. So it feels a force. So if we start with this, we will say that B1 is the current by wire one. It's an infinite wire. And we know that magnetic field mu naught or an infinite long stranger is mu or straight wire mu naught I1 over 2 pi, in this case, r, the distance between them. Great, now if we interact going back to the force on a wire, which is equal to I L cross B, oh wait, what current is this? Well, that's going to be current 2, and the magnetic field is caused by wire 1. And you'll notice that we also ask for force per unit length. That's because when we use an infinite long wire, eh, kinda, kinda hard to get an infinitely long wire. They're, they're also very expensive, especially if you pay by the foot. So we will calculate the force per unit length is equal to I2, that is I2, cross B, which is, oh, from wire 1, that was mu naught I over 2 pi R. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh, that should be I1. And then we need to figure out the direction. Well, okay, if the direction of this wire right here, let's see, magnetic field is going up I. Okay, fingers point in I. Curl towards B. In this case, B at this particular point is going into the board. So that's B1 is going into the board at wire 2's location. Your force is going this way, and they are attracted. What about the force of, this is the force on wire 2, what about the force on wire 1? Well, wire 1 feels a force going this way, which you already knew from Newton's third law. Well, I hope that helps. Um, please ask any questions that you have in class, come to my office and sit down. It's pretty confusing. Double check all your right hand rules again. I will see you in class.